Good afternoon, and welcome to the Advanced Energy Manufacturing and Recycling Grant Program Round 1 Recap Webinar. My name is Alex Hydran, and I'm the Acting Program Manager for the Manufacturing Deployment Team in the Office of Manufacturing and Energy Supply Chains, or MESC. We are excited that you joined us today to hear about the great projects that we selected during the first round of this program, and to gain some insights into what generally made applications and proposed projects during this first round more competitive. Before we get into the presentation, we just wanted to set some expectations about this webinar's content and format. While you read through the slide, we just wanted to note that while we think the insights relating to the round one selection process will be helpful, you are strongly encouraged to carefully read any future funding opportunity announcements to ensure you are adhering to the FOA's specific requirements and expectations. Here's a quick look at the agenda for the webinar. I'll kick us off here in just a second to provide a refresher of the Bill 40209 program, and then I will turn it over to my colleague Hamza, who will walk you through the round one selections and insights into the full review process. Finally, we'll close out today with a brief highlight of what is coming next for the program. As a reminder, the Advanced Energy Manufacturing and Recycling Grant Program, or Bill 40209, is a bipartisan infrastructure law funded program that was appropriated $750 million to provide grants to small and medium sized manufacturing firms, or SMMs. You can see here that the definition of an SMM includes factors such as the firm's annual sales, number of employees at the plant site, and the annual energy bills. The statute also specifies that the program should prioritize projects for minority owned entities. Lastly, the projects under Bill 4209 must take place in a former coal community where a coal mine or a coal-fired power plant has recently closed. Before we get further into the program specifics, I first wanted to take a chance to discuss some important context. As I'm sure many of you know, the bipartisan infrastructure law appropriates more than $62 billion to DOE to invest in American manufacturing and workers, expand access to energy efficiency and clean energy, deliver reliable, clean, and affordable power to most Americans, and demonstrate and deploy the technologies of tomorrow through clean energy demonstrations. This massive investment is crucial to support our country's efforts to build a clean and equitable energy economy that achieves a zero carbon electricity system by 2035, and to put the U.S. on a path to achieve net zero emissions economy-wide by 2050. As part of this bill investment, part of what makes this program especially unique and impactful are the characteristics identified on this slide. For example, SMMs account for approximately 99% of U.S. manufacturing enterprises, contribute to more than $1 trillion in gross revenue, and provide more than 5 million U.S. jobs. But SMMs are often fall behind large firms in technology and other capital investments due to financing and other resource constraints. By providing financial assistance to SMMs through programs like this, we're able to invest in projects to build new or transition existing facilities, take advantage of opportunities created by the clean energy economy, and catalyze follow-on private investment. Additionally, the program focuses on coal communities and will directly contribute to the restoration of local tax bases, stronger, more resilient communities, and aid in the transition for dislocated workers. Mining and power plant workers drove the industrial revolution and the economic growth that followed and have been essential to the growth of our country. As we shift to the clean energy economy, programs like this are essential to foster economic revitalization of and investment in these communities. The Bill 4029 statute allows for two categories of projects, described here as advanced energy manufacturing and recycling projects and industrial decarbonization projects. The first round of Bill 4209 focused exclusively on this first category for projects to re-equip, expand, or establish manufacturing or recycling facilities for the production or recycling of advanced energy property. This highlights in another important aspect of this program. It is largely clean energy technology agnostic. The statute identifies several categories of advanced energy property that include everything from wind turbine blades to EV batteries to energy efficiency technologies and many things in between. And as we will see when we discuss the round one selections, we've been able to support a diverse portfolio of advanced energy projects, allowing the program to contribute to the establishment of secure, resilient, domestic clean energy supply chains, essential for providing affordable, reliable energy for the US. While not included under the first round of the program, the statute also allows for industrial decarbonization projects to re-equip industrial or manufacturing facilities with equipment to substantially reduce the facility's greenhouse gas emissions through improvements such as lower zero carbon process heat systems, 
carbon capture, transport, utilization, and storage systems, energy efficiency or waste reduction improvements, or other industrial technologies to significantly reduce greenhouse gas emissions. With that, I would like to turn it over to my colleague Hamza, who is the lead for the first round of Bill 40209, and will take you through the round one selections and provide some insight into the FOA review process. Take it away, Hamza. Good afternoon. Thank you for the introduction, Alex. Next, we're gonna move into talking about project selections. Now these project selections were made as part of round one, and these seven projects were selected for negotiation of award for a total of $275 million in federal funds. On the right, you can see that these projects are in geographic locations across the United States. In a variety of places, the commonality between them is that they are in previous coal communities where there were closed coal mines or retired coal generation facilities. The organizations that were selected for negotiation during the first round are Boston Metal, Core Power Magnetics, Nanoramic Laboratories, MP Assets Corporation, Alpen High Performance Products, Luxwall, and Carter Wind Turbines. Now, all of these projects support a diverse variety of clean energy supply chains in different capacities. Two of the projects are in the critical material space, supporting the production of ultra pure chromium metal and the melting and casting of advanced magnetic amorphous alloys for transformers and motors. One project is in the lithium iron phosphate LFP battery electrode space. Another project is going to produce electric vehicle battery components specifically lithium ion separators. Two projects are in the energy conservation space, and these are focused on the production and scale of ultra thin triple and quad pane insulated glass units for windows. And the other project is focused on the production and scale up of vacuum insulated glass VIG window units. The other project is in the onshore wind space and is focused on the production of mid-sized 300 kilowatt turbines. Next, we are going to go through the round one recap of the funding opportunity announcement FOA review process. During round one, this is what the general investment process looked like for the Office of Manufacturing and Energy Supply Chains. There are a few terms to understand. Those are on the left and they include request for information, RFI, notice of intent, NOI, funding opportunity announcement, FOA, as well as concept paper. Now the process from announcement to award looks like the following. It starts with a notice of intent, moves through to a funding opportunity announcement, concept paper and applications, a merit review, selection and announcements, negotiations, and finally an award. Throughout this process, MESC is focused on how investments further four key topics. One, supply chain security, two, decarbonization, three, commercial viability, and four, community benefits and workforce development. Next, as part of the round one recap, we're going to dive deeper into the funding opportunity announcement review process. First, we'll take a look at compliance criteria. In round one, concept papers and full applications must have met all compliance criteria, or they will be considered non-compliant. MESS did not review or consider non-compliant submissions. What does that mean? Here are a few examples. During the concept paper phase, content and form requirements and all required documents need to be submitted and uploaded in the OSET exchange by the funding opportunity announcement deadline. What does compliance mean in the full application period? A few examples of what compliance could mean are that you must submit a compliant concept paper you must comply with the max DOE share of the individual award size. Content and form requirements and all required documents must be uploaded and submitted in OSET exchange by the funding opportunity announcement deadline as well. Two, responsiveness criteria. All submitted information and documents must have met all of the responsiveness criteria to be eligible for review or the submission were considered non-responsive. MESS did not review or consider non-responsive submissions. What does that mean? Here are some examples. Application meets the technical requirements as described in the objectives 
slash topic areas. The applicant slash application meets the eligibility criteria. And the application is not an application's specifically not of interest. Now, here's some more about the funding opportunity announcement review process. Three, concept paper review. Concept papers were evaluated based on consideration of factors and criteria. These are listed in the funding opportunity announcement. DOE notified concept paper applicants of its determination to encourage or discourage the submission of a full application. That being said, applicants were still permitted to submit a full application, even if they received notification discouraging them from doing so. Four, full, which means eligible or responsive, application review and selection. These applications were evaluated against technical review criteria in accordance with the funding opportunity announcement by the standards set forth in EERE's Notice of Objective Merit Review Procedure and the guidance provided in the DOE Merit Review Guide for Financial Assistance. We provided applicants with reviewer comments following the evaluation. Applicants had a brief opportunity to prepare a short reply to reviewer comments. In addition to the technical review criteria, the selection official was permitted to consider the technical merit the Federal Consensus Board's recommendations, program policy factors, and the amount of funds available in arriving at selections for negotiation as part of this funding opportunity announcement. Next, as part of the round one recap, we will talk about feedback given during the concept paper process. During the concept paper feedback part of round one, Discouraged letters to applicants included one or more reasons for discouragement in the following areas. Concept paper was submitted to the wrong FOA or FOA topic. Project location could not be verified. The product was not an eligible specific advanced energy property, SAEP, under this FOA. The concept paper did not adequately describe the product being manufactured or recycled, the anticipated annual targeted manufacturing or recycling capacity, a relevant market and business plan. The paper did not adequately describe the impact of the project in supporting a secure, resilient, domestic clean energy supply chain, impact of the project in reducing greenhouse gas emissions, a sufficiently qualified, experienced, or capable team necessary to complete the project, anticipated alignment with the economic development planning for the region of the project, how the project would address the four core elements of the Community Benefits Plan as required by the Department of Energy, a project that will meet the objectives of the FOA, and commercial viability. Next, we will talk about the feedback given during the full application section of Round 1. As part of Round 1, the technical review criteria was aligned with the feedback that was provided. Criterion 1 was technical merit, innovation, and impact, weighted at 25%. This took into account technical merit and innovation and the impact of technology advancement. Criterion two was financial and market viability, weighted at 25%. This took into account economic viability, business plan, and a budget and spend plan. Criterion three took into account the project work plan. This was weighted at 15%. Criterion four, management team and project partners, also weighted at 15%. And Criterion 5, the Community Benefits Plan, weighted at 20%. This took into account community and labor engagement, job quality and workforce continuity, diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility, as well as the Justice 40 initiative. In round one, applications showed common areas of strength. As part of Criteria 1, technical merit, innovation, and impact, and when an application showed strength, it clearly stated and demonstrated the ability to deliver an eligible market-ready specific advanced energy property. It also addressed clearly how the project would resolve current or projected gaps in secure, resilient, domestic, clean energy supply chains. In the second criteria, financial and market viability, I cannot emphasize this enough. When an application showed strength, they clearly stated and demonstrated economic viability, sustainability, and potential growth beyond DOE funding. They also proposed 
realistic, reasonable project budgets with contingencies to address risk. To address risk. The next criteria, project work plan. Applications showed, showed strength when they clearly stated and demonstrated clear, detailed, timely, and responsible tasks in work plans, and the project objectives were likely to be completed within the proposed time period of 36 months, while accounting for complexity and risks. I would like to emphasize this point again. The projects need to be completed within the proposed time period of 36 months, and as part of round one, we were looking for projects that were commercially viable and ready. Criteria four, management team and project partners. Applications showed strength when they clearly stated and demonstrated key personnel with success in industry and or similar projects and involvement of project participants. Criteria five, the community benefits plan. Applications showed common areas of strength when they clearly stated and demonstrated that the project would actively support the four core elements of the community benefits plan. How they did this was by showing community and labor engagement, high quality, good paying jobs, specific high quality actions to meet diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility goals, and specific measurable benefits to disadvantaged communities. Next, I'll pass it off to Alex to talk about what's next in 2024. Thanks, Hamza. So what is in store for Bill 40209 in 2024? As we mentioned in the announcement for this webinar, DOE is moving quickly on another round for this program, so please stay tuned. We just wanted to re-highlight this slide that was shared earlier that shows the two categories of projects that can be supported through the Bill 40209 statute advanced energy manufacturing and recycling projects like those supported during the first round of the program, and industrial decarbonization projects, which were not included during the first round. Both of these are eligible categories of projects under the Bill 40209 statute. Unfortunately, we can't give any more details on the second round at this time other than say, stay tuned, which also brings me to the next slide. In addition to this list of great resources on community benefit plans and Bill 4209, we highly encourage you all to sign up for the MESC newsletter to get updates and announcements for this and any other opportunities being offered by MESC. The MESC newsletter will be your best real-time way to hear about the next round of Bill 4209 with newsletter announcements directly coinciding with the release of new funding opportunities from our office. Thank you again for joining us for this webinar on the Advanced Energy Manufacturing and Recycling Grant Program. We hope you found it interesting and useful, and please stay tuned for any updates regarding the next round of this program. Thank you.